Hey everyone, this is Trisha with Easy Amity Trade, and I made a promise that I would do a couple videos on setting audio alerts for Sierra and Ninja. So I just did a video on Sierra, so if you're looking at this and you need it for Sierra, just look on my YouTube list. This one will be for Ninja Trader. And also just wanted to let you guys know I'm doing a webinar on Tuesday, July 26th at 7 o'clock. And the subject will be trading 6E pre-market. And the setups that I'm using to trade that are the Slinky, Divergence Trades, and the Keltner Channel Continuation Setup. So I'll go over all those in their entirety. And, of course, they'll work on any instrument on any market. So it doesn't have to be... Uh, used on the 6E pre-market. That's just what I'm going to go over because a lot of people are interested in the 6E. So if you want more info, just go to easyeminitrade.com and click on the webinar tab at the top of the page and all the information is right there. Okay, so I need to have some WAVE files. So I have lots of them saved um, over the years and if you do then great if you need to create your own there are a couple different ways you can do it I use audacity that's a free download and that's what I'll um, generally use to create my um, audio alerts so I'll show you how I do that so I'm just going to open that up and these are my controls so this would be the record button and this would be the stop button so I'm just going to use the sound I'll just say test test and now I recorded it, and I'm going to play it back by hitting this green arrow and see what it sounds like. Test. Okay, so if I don't like it and I don't, then I'm just going to do a brand new one. So I'm just going to go File and New. Sounds like I was, like, right on my mic. So I'm just going to go New, and then a new window will open up, and I'm going to do it again. Test. Test. Okay, so I like that one better. So I'm going to go up here to File, and I'm going to choose to Export. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now, and then I'll show you a couple different ways that you can save it. So we'll call it Test and Save. And then I'm going to hit OK right here. Now if I want to close this, um, it's going to ask me if I want to save the changes before closing. And I'm going to say no, because Audacity will also save the file in its own format, but I don't need to do that because I just saved it right here as a WAV file. So I'm going to hit No, and now I have to close that first box, and it's going to ask me the same thing. That was the one that I didn't like the recording on, so I'm just going to say No. So now I have to get this into the Ninja Sound folder. So there are a couple different ways you can do it. You could um, save it right into the Sound folder, or you can drag and drop it. So like I said, I'm going to right here, I'm going to drag and drop it. So I need to go to the C drive here, and then I'm going to go to Program Files, and then I'm going to scroll down until I find Ninja Trader, and then you'll see that you've got your sound folder right there. Now you can take it and just drag it right into that sound folder, or open it up and then just take it and just drag it. Now this always asks me um, if I have permission, so I just hit continue, and now it's here on my list under test. If you would prefer to not use the drag and drop method, when you make your recording through Audacity, where it asks you to save it, instead of saving it to your desktop, you'll just find the same spot. Go to computer, I'll just show you real quick here again. Um, I should have did that one first, so I'm just going to blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm just going to blah, blah. There you go. So that's just one that we can just save. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm just going to call it blah, blah. But I need to save it here under Computer. Computer, you'll see C, and then I need to go down to Program Files. And then I need to scroll down to Ninja Trader 7 and Sounds. And then I would just hit Save and save it right there. And I'm not going to because I really don't want that in there. <laughs> but that's what you would do. So you have both 
both options. And some of you may know an easier way to do it. That's fine. And then close that. And no, I don't want to save it. So now we need to apply it to our chart, to whatever um, indicator that you want this to be attached to. So let's find a chart that we can use here. Um, let's use this one. All right, so this is an Q on a four range. It really doesn't matter what we use. So let's say that um, you have an indicator that allows you to use an alert. So I have the super trend stop on here. You can see the red dots here and then these blue dots here. So I'm just going to go to that indicator because that has an alert option built right in. So here's in a super trend right here. I open it up here so I can see the settings. And what you'll need to do is choose to enable the alert. Let me find it here, which is right here, sound alert active. I have it set to false, so you'll change that to true. Now, these are the WAV files that show up when you download that indicator, but these are not going to fire off unless you actually have these WAV files. So I'm going to change it. So the one we just made was tests, and this is for new downtrend. Um, you'll see by clicking on this, I don't have a drop-down menu. Some indicators will give you a drop-down menu where you can choose the WAV files from the list, but if it doesn't have it, then what you'll do is you'll just highlight it and type in the name of the file that you want to put in there. So we just made it and we called it test, right? So test, and it's a WAV file, so test WAV. And then you can hit apply and OK, or just OK, either way. And now that will take effect. Now I'm going to change this back to false because I don't want that firing off on me um, while I'm trading. But that would be how you would change a sound file if it doesn't give you a drop-down option. If it gave you a drop-down option, then you would just choose it from your list, whatever um, sound that you wanted. Now, one thing I do want to tell you, in Ninja, you don't have the capability of setting alerts on lines unless it's part of the indicator, as just mentioned. Sierra, we can just right-click on the line and choose to set an alert on uh, any line that we draw. So if you wanted to do something like that in Ninja, what you would have to do is you'd have to, let me just show you what we've got here. Right here we've got yesterday's high, and here I have yesterday's open. So let's say that I wanted alerts set on yesterday's high when price is crossing above it, let's say. There's an indicator that you can download, and you can probably find it on Ninja Trader um, Forum. And they're analine alerts on indicator or analine alerts on price. They're both the same thing. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm just going to double click on that to put it on my list here. And now I've got the setting box here. So right here you'll see sound alerts active, true. So if I wanted sound alerts to work, I have to have that set to true. If it's set to false, obviously they're not going to fire off. So then what I want to do is... I can choose, you can see there's different, like this would be alert number one, alert number two, alert number three, etc. So you have the capability of setting alerts on up to 10 different line parameters or you know any other areas that you want. So what I'll do is I'll just use the, um, the first one here. So alert line active, I'm going to say true because I want that to be active. I want this to fire off. And so what I need to do is I need to put that level in there. And that level was 4662.25. So I'm going to type that in there, 4662.25. And I'm going to change it to green. So this way I know that's like yesterday's high. So I'll just choose this um, forest green there. And I'll kind of give it the same kind of look that the indicator actually has. And here's the alert file here. So let's say that... Um, you know, we'll just use that test one again. You'll see I'm clicking on it, but there's no drop-down box. So now I'm going to have to type in that alert again. So the one we did was test. So test.wave. 
Also up here under alert type, you have the option to choose cross above, cross below, or cross above or below. So I'm going to choose across above or below because if it crosses above, it'll fire off. And then if it crosses below, it'll fire off. And you could do that for all the reference areas that you have marked on your chart by just typing them in here or you can establish those levels and just type them in here. You don't have to have the lines already on your chart. So I'm just going to hit apply and see what it looks like up there. And it's right on top of my hi from yesterday. So I know you can see label, it's going to say 0, 1, and I think you can um, opt to um, change the label on that if you want. Like if I wanted to put um, hi here or um, previous hi, whatever you like, okay? It's, it's totally up to you. So I'm going to go previous hi. And you have the option on what side of price that you want it to um, display on. So I want the price markers. I can go to the left if I choose. So I'm going to just go left and see what that looks like. So I'm going to move this out of the way so I can see what that looks like. I'm going to choose apply. And so now it should show up over here on the left. Oh, darn, I forgot this is different than Sierra. It's just going to show those, and I don't want those there, so I'm going to put that back to the right. Hit Apply. All right, so now it's back over here. It's not showing the whole entire text that I just put there. So if you want to see the whole text, you can change your parameters on your right side margin. So let me just do that to show you how to do that. You can right click and go to properties and then scroll down and you'll see here right side margin 60. So I'm going to change that to, um, I'll just change it to 100. I really don't know what to change it to. And I'm going to go apply. Yeah, that works. And then hit OK. Now that'll lock that there so you always have this space here so it's going to tell you that line that you just um, set on that indicator is a previous high so if you want to do one for yesterday's open I mean you can do the same exact thing you can set them all up at the same time you don't have to do one at a time um, I just didn't want to do all of them so I'll just do one more so alert level, so yesterday's opens, 46.54. I don't usually mark yesterday's open, but let's just do it anyway. So 46, what is that? 46.54 and alert line active. And I'll do the same thing, cross above or below. And that one we'll put open or yesterday's open, whatever you like. And I'm going to use the same color. I'll use a similar color anyway. So let's just use um, this and alert file. So obviously if I had an alert in on that, I would make one that said open. And then up here I would put high or previous high or previous open, something along those lines. And I'll do the same kind of dash thing going on there. And I didn't give an alert, so I'm just going to use the same alert, test.wave. And I'm going to just hit apply so I see what it looks like over there. All right, so there you go. So yesterday's open, previous high. And so now whenever price crosses above or below, it'll fire off on the high and on the low using whatever indicator sound, um, syndicate, indicator alert sound that you put in here. So the big key is make sure that your sound file on whatever indicator you're using, if it doesn't give you the option to choose it from a drop down, that you type it in there exactly as um, the file 
name reads in your folder. Now, if you're going to use this on the previous day's high loan close, obviously common sense tells you that you're going to have to change those every morning, okay? So, you know, don't forget to do that. And I think that that is it, you guys. If you have any questions about this, certainly you're welcome to send me an email. And I hope you all have a fabulous weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, you guys.